Okay, so yeah, thank you all for presenting on uh, on the design stage. Um, it's very interesting always to see experts and and sharing their work. Um, I think we are missing Parveen, but yeah, let's go ahead without him. Um, I think uh, if you look at all the presentations, it shows that there's a lot of different stakeholders focusing on, on their work from having landscape or power and ethernet connections to the overall design systems and of course architecture. Um, what would you feel was your best value so far? If, if there was anything that comes to light from using BIM uh, in your practice uh, today. So is there a specific thing that hasn't been mentioned yet that you would say, well, I forgot to mention that this was one of the additional values that BRIM has brought us? Well, basically with uh, BIM, you have all in the information together. You don't need the drawings anymore. So especially from a landscape perspective, it's uh, easy enough to read the model if you have all your data correct there. So it's extremely useful from our perspective to, uh, to use Revit, to use BIM technology, and to implement that, in the, at least for landscape. Yeah, thank you. Um, for us, I think, for us, in our company, BIM is not just software. It's a methodology that applied to an integrated design that we do before BIM, before CAD, it maxi maximizes the efficiency of this process. So I think it's very interesting to come here and see uh, Rist and other colleagues that share with us the same methodology. Uh, it's pretty interesting because uh, if more, more company, more people use the same uh, approach, uh, will work better together, of course. Uh, I think at Bay BIM Designs, the, uh, the value we are bringing here is uh, not necessarily like a specific plugin that we are developing, uh, but actually the uh, solution-oriented attitude. So uh, this is not going to be the last plugin we develop. Uh, we like to say that uh, our culture is we develop unique solutions for unique challenges. So we like to take on challenges that rather avoided by others or people not seeing uh, how they can develop a solution for. And uh, we come up with a, an innovative solution uh, for that challenge. I was just gonna, yeah, agree with you both on that one. Um, I think when we started the three day office challenge, it was, we, we, are, we are really proud about our, our end product, we are. But when you ask people sometimes, you know, how was the journey? And it's like, oh, you know, when you get to the end, it's like, thank goodness we've delivered that project rather than, you know, that, that was great. So I think it's, it's understanding that we can, you know, we need to harness the workflow uh, using the tools available to us to have the, the best outcome. And that, and that means, you know, uh, taking it apart to put it back together again in the way that we now can in the modern way of how we're working. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think, well, I'm not sure about the time, but uh, I just want to raise, of course, the, 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 the question of collaboration, because, yeah, we're not working in silos. And, uh, of course, we are all very focused on our specific, specific, sorry, specific expertise. But, yeah, in the end, it's a team effort, right? So, uh, of course, BIM Collab is all about connecting people in projects. Uh, I saw in the presentation that uh, similar tools were used uh, as well. Uh, but what is your take for at least the rest of you on how do you interact with the other stakeholders on projects? Because yeah, you're not working in silo, as, as I would mention. So normal communication could be email or telephone calls and in the three-day exercise that you are sitting next to each other. But you don't always have that luxury. And it's not only always only within your own company. So. Any thoughts on that from any one of you? 
Yeah, we haven't heard Praveen yet, so I will give you the mic. See, I still remember uh, 20 years back when you used to work with the most of the uh, CAD-based platform. And AutoCAD happened to be among the most popular one. And we were many stakeholders. Architect is working in his own drawings, structure, mechanical, interior, plumbing, fire protection and all. Within architect, there are multiple people. One is working on the elevation, another one is working on the floor plans, and sec third one is taking out quantities. What happens if the main architect changes the size of a door? The elevation guy, the section guy, quantity takeoff, and then structure calculation, mechanical, everything will go away. And by the time the first information change, which happened through the architect, reaches to the mechanical or plumbing or structural guy, it takes two weeks. That means they are working on two weeks old data. And lots of man hour and manpower was wasted there. That's how BIM is all about collaboration, right? Everyone now within one office is working on the same file. So if I change it now, you know Revit happened to be the one of the most popular BIM tool. The definition of Revit itself is revise instantly, rather than revising manually. We used to do the revisions manually, and now it is automatically and instantly. Revise instantly. That's how the industry is changing, and the BIM is a big game changer. It's all about collaboration. Multiple people, I cannot imagine many people working on the same file. In the era of AutoCAD or Excel, PowerPoint, one person can work on the file at one point of time. Now with the BIM, multiple users are working on the same file, same single model. That's how the industry has been changing, and I think it's a big revolution, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could I add to that? Yeah. No, I was just going to say, as far as yeah, we didn't um, we didn't do the external anyone externally when we did the project, but I think. It, it comes down to, to honesty with, with the, the wider design team um, and, and asking questions. And we actually did an internal presentation with an architect that we work closely with on multiple projects where we basically asked them and they asked us, what annoys, what annoys you <laughs> about our workflows? And, and having that honest conversation because the architects are doing things that work perfectly for them, it, it, you know, the, the workflow is ideal, and then we load a model in, for example, and it doesn't suit us. And, and just having sort of empathy and understanding for the other design disciplines, realizing that we're all trying to achieve the same goal and asking the questions like, you know, is everything good? It, does this annoy you? <laughs> you know, Sometimes it's just so, as easy as that. So keep communicating uh, always, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, but how is that managed uh, in, in normal processes? Is that with a review session every bi-weekly or is it something that you do like on BIM Collab, you're essentially communicating full full time because you can always have remarks on, on the models and, and sharing that and it can be seen on multiple levels. But is that more split in that sense now in, in your practice, you'd say? I, th I think as well as in-person design team meetings, it's starting off, you know, the, the, the narrative online as, as soon as possible. So getting the model up at early stages and starting that commentary, whether it be through a design tool like BIM Collab or whatever it is as well. Um, and also having ad hoc, ad hoc meets that aren't purely about the project just to gain some like outside of perspective. Um, but yeah, I would say generally, I think it's the winning mixture is like a, is the recipe is, is a bit of everything to keep it moving along. And when it's not working, tools down, right, let's decide a new strategy for how we're going to communicate and recognizing it's not working for everyone and agreeing, does Teams work for you? Shall we change it? So yeah, change. Uh, actually, coming from, uh, uh, I've worked both on uh, design and uh, field side, and uh, uh, when it comes to collaboration and, and team meetings, uh, having this continuous communication, not only among the design team, but also the field team, uh, plays a huge role in delivering a quality uh, model and a quality construction, uh, because we, uh, we often uh, see things uh, 
when you have clashes between different trades, that the field crew uh, would have an input about the constructability of a certain system that has to be taken in, in consideration. So uh, weekly team meetings can be of, uh, effective, uh, also using tools like uh, BEM360 or something to have a, a real-time update of your models. Uh, also the ability to jump on a meeting. That, like if your meeting, your set uh, coordination meeting can be weekly, but that doesn't mean that you cannot meet two or three times a week if you need to. So uh, is that internal communication between the team and uh, the team willingness and availability to jump on a call and be present to discuss uh, clash is uh, coordination issues or clashes, yeah. Uh, um, the, I think the, the also the soft the tool that we use for collaborating it's very important because and change the way in which we collaborate. Uh, there is a Canadian I think philosophy, a Marshall McCallug that say the medium is the message. So the the tool that you use uh, change the way you work. And this also for the collaborative platforms such as Bing Collab, Bing Trial, and they have to change in better the way we collaborate because we we have the the information that we need accessible, not editable because uh, I don't want to move uh, a structural column uh, also if I usually uh, want as it, to. As it is not your your responsibility. Uh, yeah, of course. But, but I can see that, uh, I can see that especially from the beginning of the design stage. And this is very important because the decision that we take at the beginning, so we don't start to work alone and then collaborate, put together and, okay, let's see what's it. But start at the beginning, the choice we make at the beginning influence the design the most instead of during the construction. So it's very important, yep. Yeah, actually I think, uh, yes, communication is really important, meetings are really important, but I think it's fundamental to define a strategy from the beginning. So it's not just about communication, but for instance, in many cases we found difficult to make the other teams understand that it's fundamental to use at least the same technology, not just the same software. So. We found uh, really difficult, uh, for instance, to work with people that are working in CAD, in 2D, and then, uh, yes, we can collaborate with them. But again, it would be better if everybody would work with the same software, with the same technology, at least. That's from a collaboration perspective. Yeah, well, I, I want to respond to that, of course. But uh, as we at BIMCOLA feel like we need more open standards, because as we are uh, involved in, in throughout the entire process. So some specific aspects, maybe an early design, you can do with a team with one piece of software because it offers the functionality to do so. But at some point, people will, will need to apply tools that are maybe not the same tool, but they are the best choice for their specific task. So we see a lot of different um, software, and then we need to step over the incompatibility uh, because it's not only you who are designing and, and building and, and engineering the models. Essentially, it's also data for the client that they wish to query at some point. And if it's scattered in all kinds of different systems in a format that you need 16 tools to read, that's not helpful. So, that, yeah, so we always are, are, are striving in our philosophy to have a sort of common data format so it can be archived. And it can be exchanged and used by everyone on the project, not specific tools. So, of course, you can have sub-teams that work with the same software to achieve an end goal for work-in-progress models. But once you share them, share them in an open format. So, I see you people nodding, so I, I'm, I'm understanding that you agree me, with me. So, um, so we have is, um, maybe some questions from the audience, um, if there are any to the people. We still have a couple of minutes. Uh, 
Hi there, it's uh, Kong Huang here from Heatherwick Studio. Um, just with regard to paperless um, delivery, just I just wanted to understand what, what were the kind of main challenges that you had in convincing clients to um, deliver the project in a paperless format? Um, just kind of like a, a description of that, really. Okay, uh, so first of all, uh, usually we work with private client. They don't want to, they don't need the paper for approbation or something that our, our client usually just want, okay, I want to see the building as it's come. I, w I won't be sure that uh, our room are big enough uh, to achieve my business plan. And I want that it's uh, beautiful. So for this, we use Power BI for the business plan, render for the beautiful, and just a set of your plan for, for seed building. The, the, more, the big problem is with the general contractor, because general contractor need to something to build. Um, this is, unfortunately, it's going well, because uh, our general contractor give them just the IFC, and uh, quantity take off, and they say, okay, uh, I have to redraw in everything because my workers don't use, of course, tablet, but it's fine for make the price of the building. So it works for us, also because our cost hourly is much bigger than the general contractor, so also the client uh, like this. Um, in this way, uh, after the building, we uh, make an interview with the general contractor and ask him, uh, okay, um, keep, keep holding that we never give to you all the drawings. What do you want more to build uh, the bit? I just say, no, okay, the IPC was fine. I just need the native format of the quantity takeoff, and that's it. Okay, so we are almost out of time. Um, maybe if I want, yeah, just want to conclude there. It, it's paperless is fine, but of course the BIM model captures much more than just the drawings or the dimensions on those drawings. It's of course capturing everything. Uh, of okay. course, uh, paper is just it's just not for duplicate information, like uh, interior design detail. Uh, of course, we give a drawings. Okay, our time is up. There's a red screen in the back of me. So yeah, thank you all for uh, viewing in person and online. So yeah, small coffee break.